Well, last October we had a significant flooding event here in East Devon. About 350 properties in 30 towns and communities were significantly flooded. And our research over the last year has shown that actually a large proportion of that flooding came not necessarily from the main rivers or from the culverts, but actually from runoff off fields in the adjoining areas. Um, we've been working with farmers to try and raise awareness of those problems with those fields, soil compaction and, and how we can actually address that. And uh, we believe that will make a real difference to reducing that flood risk. Uh, last autumn, when we had that violent storm, uh, we had five inches of rain. An inch of rain is 100 tonnes of water to the acre. So multiply that by 20 acres, which is this field, that's 10,000 tonne of water. Uh, that causes a fair amount of soil compaction, especially on the surface. The difference between compacted and non-compacted soil is the amount of air in the soil. And I've got an example here of some compacted soil, which shows to be few, few air pockets in the soil. This is basically one lump. And what we've done, we've done some work on this actually, looking at how water percolates through the soil. And we found from our rainfall experiments, where we had a rainfall simulator put, re, uh, simulating raindrops onto the, the soil. So we ran it for an hour at 50 millimetres an hour, which is quite intense. We found that 90% of the water just shed off the surface. It, it didn't soak into the soil. And so and this is part of the runoff problem. Whereas if the soil is, is, is open, and I'll just break some up. Like, so this is like an open soil structure here. We found that for the same experiment, when we loosened the soil, the subsoiler, we had literally zero runoff. Soil compaction is a big problem around East Devon. Our research has shown that, but it's also an issue that's um, prevalent in other parts of the region. We've carried out surveys in about 25 catchments around the whole of the southwest region, and that's shown a significant problem with soil compaction. Clearly, the farmer doesn't want compacted soil, so that's why we plough the soil to break the soil up. We, a compacted soil, particularly when it's deeper in the soil profile, limits root growth and limits the ability of roots to explore the soil to get nutrients. We have the runoff problem, clearly a, a compact soil generates more runoff, but there's also a, a biodiversity problem. Compact soils tend to have less life in them because this is just not an environment you want to live in. Well, it doesn't do your field any good for one thing because you're washing off nutrients, you're washing some of the best soil out into the road, which we don't want, and it's just good practice to try and keep your soil in your field. The, the windows for subsoiling are quite small in the West Country because it's so wet and farmers have got so many other things to do, like getting harvesting crops, milking cows, that finding the time to do this is, I mean, farmers, farmers I know are already, already doing 90 hour a week and just fitting, this is yet another thing to do. And what you do one season doesn't always mean to say that you do the same next season. Uh, we could have a very dry autumn from now on and we won't get a problem. But like last year, we had uh, these violent storms and uh, well, whatever you try to do properly, you've got difficulty in achieving it. And um, then you create problems the year after. Well, this is the year after. And in that period, we probably had 40, 45 inches of rain. And the compaction on this soil is enormous. So what the subsoiler does, if you set it at the right depth, the wings on the legs, the subsoil has got a, a, a tine that goes through the ground. It's got wings. It'll come hit this soil here and it'll crash into it and break it open and it just literally shatters through and hopefully you get a shatter across the soil profile underneath between the two legs. So I've got a, a soil compaction tester here in my hand, it just measures the resistance by pressing. So this is, is quite, it's some resistance here as so I push down, particularly now I've just hit a fence there and about, about there. Hopefully the subsoil has broken it up. So this is where the subsoil has gone and it just literally goes easy, straight through. And so what I'll just show you the spade, the difference. So underneath, can you see how the soil underneath is loose? Where's this bit here? I'll just clear this away. That's the bit down there that we need to go to. That's actually the bit that needs breaking. That's what the compaction tester went through to. This bit here. Following the flooding in Fenerton, we've got what's known as a flood 
recovery group, which is the East Devon Flood Recovery Group. And it's been, in my experience, one of the best working relationships between all the agencies and especially the um, South West Water and the Environment Agency. And I think the Environment Agency should be applauded for the initiatives they're taking. We're certainly encouraging farmers to uh, try and sow their crops as early as possible, um, trying to obviously get in here and break up the soil um, once they've harvested their crops and obviously get in then and, and try and get their, um, if they're going to put a crop in over the winter, get it in as early as possible so that we've got some ground cover. That all helps reduce the runoff from the fields. I think the challenges that farmers face are because they've had to get bigger and bigger to be economic. It's hard to be economic in farming and to cover the areas of ground which are needed in production nowadays you have to have bigger machinery which does lead to the compaction and obviously addressing this problem I think we're actually all moving together in the same direction. Well we can never stop flooding it's always a risk that it could happen um, but we recognise there's a number of things that can be done to reduce that risk. The Environment Agency clearly has a role to play in installing flood defence schemes where they are absolutely necessary. Uh, we're working with the local authorities to try and make sure that the culverts, the drains um, are maintained so that that can accept the water. And clearly here today we're working with the farmers to try and address the problems of soil. And what's great about this is that you're dealing with the problem right at the source and that can reduce a lot of the pressure on the system all the way down to the river. We have had wet periods in the past and um, back years ago uh, you could call on the army to actually help you out dig potatoes but uh, I don't suppose the ministry would be keen on sending the troops out now dipping spuds so we have to do it with machinery. <laughs>